I want to try something a little bit different. For a while, I've been building a personal website. Um, I've been building it out since before I started this channel. It's really nothing crazy. It's just a personal website. It was also supposed to be a little bit of kind of like a um, developer portfolio and a blog. Problem is, it sucks. It's, it's not good. And I want to fix it. However, instead of building out a complete site or tearing it down and building the whole thing completely off camera and, pre and then presenting it back as an addition to this channel and some of the other stuff that I have going on online and saying, hey, look, I built it. Instead of doing that, um, I want to document the process and really kind of bring you along with me through the not so great stuff and through some of the good stuff, how I build it, how I make design decisions and or lack thereof, um, and how I implement all the features and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, let's fix my website. Before we do that, the first thing that I want to do is show you what it actually is currently. Um, so this is it, rushinglabs.com. Um, I've had the domain for a while. I've got a list of blog posts. Um, that's something else that I'm working on is just blogging over time until my writing capabilities get a little bit better and a little bit better. Kind of the same thing I'm doing with this channel. Um, so you can see, click into the post. We've kind of got everything here, you know, write a little bit, all that sort of thing. Got some pictures, got some links. It seems pretty great, straightforward. We even have some categories where you can click into like, the, you know, a specific category, but you see where there's some inconsistency because um, I just, I don't know, just wasn't always paying attention to this. Like clicking on the software one where we have the categories uh, title or label up here and then I click on it and then now it's gone. If you see right here with the way or the, the listing of the post over here, it seems like they're kind of moving over a little bit if you look at that across switching between them. All of this is super bare bones, super basic. Um, because I, for most of my software development career, I wasn't really, uh, I never really did any work with UI or UX design or anything like that. I really just kind of, it was more backend or it was strict functionality on front end stuff, stuff like making a website responsive and that sort of thing. But that's another thing is responsiveness. So for right now, um, this website, it looks great. It's built with Next.js on that responsiveness note, let's look into that. So if I hit F12, get into the developer tools. Okay, so if we turn on the responsive view, you really quickly see that like right here, the header starts to get pretty crowded. Um, instead of the links collapsing down into what I think is a hamburger menu, kind of that, that weird thing with the three lines that virtually every single website after about 2008 started using. Um, yeah, I need that because it would be great if the title of my website, Rushing Labs up here, was actually just on one line and the links were hidden in behind some sort of dropdown or something. Um, but then you see that, okay, cool. So we can click into the post and all, um, but just the header's messed up. So that's just one example of the really basic things that instead of hiding this away, I thought it'd be really great to just document the process. Okay, cool. So moving on from that, um, let's see, Talk. speaking of documenting the process, everything that is in the website right now that I've coded, I have here on GitHub um, underneath. If you go to my profile, Medlin, um, and then Rushing Labs blog Next.js. Really, really imaginative name, I know. Um, I didn't really flesh out this repo yet. Don't worry, a readme will come. I can make all those changes and everything. But basically the process that I'm going forward that I want to start creating with this is that if there's an issue that I find on the site, um, I will actually just open an issue like right here. And so like the one that I was talking about just now where the header is crowded and you kind of th need some links to hide behind something else and you want to kind of pull the, the site title out, I've gone ahead and created an issue, created a screenshot, kind of mocked it up, listed out some things that I would like to see. And this is what I'm gonna be working off of. So this is gonna be kind of the process that I'm following um, for this website. And so as I go through this, it's not gonna, I don't want to keep this process all to myself. If any of you out there watching this, if you find something that I've messed up or if you wanna make a recommendation and you're so inclined to include screenshots and explanations and you want to be a part of this process, go ahead, open an issue and tell me about it. 
I can't promise that I'll get to it immediately or really in a timely manner <laughs> because I've got some other stuff going on as well, not just strictly building out this website. And there's other videos that I wanna make and all that sort of thing too. Um, but I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to leave anything out. I don't want to make this completely on my own. And also, um, you know, it's something I've learned as a developer is that kind of one of the worst things that you can do is always work on your own. It's great to invite other people into your work to highlight some things that you missed or to also kind of share the lessons that you've learned together along the way. So, so yeah, this is where I'm going to be tracking these issues um, or these issues is right here inside of the, the little GitHub issues. And then of course I'll go with the, with the PRs and merge them in that way and that sort of thing. So from there, let's go ahead and actually try to fix this one. All right, so this is the site that's in production hosted on Heroku. I can talk more about that later. Um, so let's go ahead and close that. Let's look at the one that I have running here locally on localhost. Um, I think I can, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna leave it regular. I know this might be a little bit small on screen, um, but I don't really wanna throw things off um, uh, the view wise with zooming in kind of like this. Um, so if I have to zoom in, I will, if it makes sense to. Okay, so let's open our developer tools back, use the element selector and figure out, okay, where our links are inside of our HTML. Looks like they're inside the header. Um, okay, now I forget where I actually put the header inside this website. I think it's in the layout component. So we'll go back here to VS Code. Um, yeah, the layout is here inside the components directory and header. Yeah, okay, so we have our header. Yes, projects and about. Okay, cool, so we can close these. Um, so now I need to open the style sheet that I have created for layout. Looks like I used both of those layout.module.css. So that would be right here. I can pull that over here secondary. And then if I'm already using a class name for the navbar links, which it looks like I am styles.navbar links. And yes, I pulled styles in, that's in the layout module style sheet. So then I can grab this navbar links class from over here to the style sheet that we already opened and I can search for it and we, let's see, okay, so we have these right here handling navbar links. Are they anywhere else in the style sheet? No, they are right there. All right. And it looks like we have no CSS media query. Oh, okay, we have some up here at the top. So I should have done a better job of commenting these. Um, max width of 399 pixels and screen orientation is portrait. And then min width of 400 and orientation is portrait. So it looks like these are both of the media queries that I put in here for kind of like a mobile view. Um, you don't want these like too, like I don't, I don't want these too device specific. So I think I'm going to leave them alone, but I am going to give myself a little code comment. So let's see, we want navbar links. You know what, at first, let me experiment with making navbar links just not visible when we're in this portrait um, kind of mobile view a little bit. So, do a display none, and immediately, I don't like duplicating code, but again, I'm not optimizing anything just yet. I'm just kind of creating something to get some functionality going. So let's see. That didn't do what I wanted it to do. And with 400, don't want that. Let's 
And so here we have the nav bar links. Hmm. Okay, so display none is definitely the CSS rule that I want, um, but it's just, it looks like it's just not getting applied the correct way. I wonder why. Um, hmm. There's no other display here. Yes, we could just slap an important on it, but I don't think that's typically bad form. You typically don't want to do that, just kind of slapping things around and forcing them because then you run into specificity issues and all that sort of thing. So I don't want to do that. I do want to make sure that I didn't need to just like refresh the page extra or something. I've run into that quite a bit. Let's see. No? Okay. It's, it really is just not working correctly. Something is not working correctly. Hmm. Battles.header, class name, nav bar links. You know what? Let's see if let's see if this rule is even get applied. Let's um, apply this really obnoxious color. Let's see if it's yes. Okay, so these rule sets are getting applied. We're just having an issue specifically with the display property. Interesting. All right, so I wonder if the, the DevTools window can tell us a little bit more. It looks like, okay, so it looks like display none is applied, but then up here, the layout header, the header class is coming in and overriding our display none with display flex. Huh. Well, do we actually want display none? on the h2s we want display none so yeah so instead of because instead of not allowing this whole thing to show up we actually want these individual links to not show up here um, so the div might be okay all right so let's see let's take this back out um, navbar links and then I specifically want to apply this on the H2 that's underneath navbar links. Let's see what that does. Okay, so now we have at least the first step in our um, desired look. The first thing that I'm gonna try, um, just Googling for how to create a hamburger icon in CSS. It looks like they're just using three div elements with some styling to it. 35 pixels, a height of five, background color black. I like it. Let's get, let's kind of, let's start with it. Okay, so first, yes, I could type three divs, but I'm going to copy and paste. So let's see. Let's move those over. You know what? I'm going to wrap a div in a div because why not? It's the modern web. And we're gonna give this, whoops, a class name, styles dot, you know what, menu icon. I like it. 
and we're just going to throw this up here that way i know that it will get applied um, regardless while we're testing this out and we are going to try or we're going to see if the CSS taken straight from W3 schools is good enough for exactly what we need. Instead, um, but actually though, menu icon is not the speci is not the specifier that we need. We need menu icon and the div that is directly underneath menu icon because it menu icon here and then we have the divs. So um, let's save everything and let's whoops see what that gets us and it looks like we have the black things you kind of can't see it um might be a little bit hard to see let me you know what let me change that from black to ooh, white smoke instead of white it's like a fancy white i like that there we go okay cool so now we have our why can't i yeah get the selector off now we have our little menu icon up here inside of our bar, our little header bar, and um, we can see the full title right here without it being squished or scrunched or crowded or anything like that. All right, so I don't like all of this being here though. I actually want this inside of its own component. So instead, what I'm going to do, especially, 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 I'll say this too, not only do we have our layout here for our menu icon kind of taking up space inside of our layout component that is probably already a little bit bloated, but we also have styling for our menu icon inside of the styling for our already bloated layout. And so we don't want everything to be, you know, kind of, I don't know, separation of concerns. So anyway, components, new file, um, you know what? Yeah, I'll call this menu icon .js. We're using JavaScript because I have not graduated to TypeScript yet. I will, I forget exactly how to do a, um, a function component. I can't spell default apparently. So I'm going to borrow from the code that I already have inside of, um, of the layout and I'm going to do this here and then we're going to not really do anything else besides just return some fancy HTML pull that out here put that in right there and we're going to the menu icon and put that right there um, okay, then, all right, so now we've created our menu icon component. We need to import menu icon. Oh, cool, VS Code handled that for us, pulls it in straight from the exact place that it needs to come from. We already know that we're going to also move um, menu icons styles or its CSS to its own module. So we're gonna create a new file. Um, menu icon, what did I? dot module dot css sweet and we can pull this over take that out and put that over here like just like so um you know what so that i don't have to retype that stuff elsewhere we can also take these two media queries i know we're duplicating code i'm gonna pull those over here, but i'll handle that later in a different video um pull those over don't know if I want that there there we go and I want this inside of here and inside of here Ooh, this inconsistency is messing with me give that an extra when you return um, carriage return to me there we go There we go. Okay. All right. And then we need to import our styles into our menu icon. So we can look at exactly how we imported the module for the layout. And since we're basically doing the exact same thing just for the menu icon, so we can import styles since I copy and pasted and I'm using the same name, the same class name for 
the um, JavaScript embedded CSS. Chrome. Let's see. Um, menu icon dot module dot CSS. Can do that that way. That works. That works. That works. Okay, cool. So we've saved all of our changes. We moved our menu icon over to a new component. Now we need to see that it actually worked. Because, yeah, there shouldn't have been any new functionality. We were just um, just adding or, or just moving things around, just changing the way that our code was, um, was, was kind of built. So, yes, we have no extra functionality. When we click on it, it doesn't do anything. That's cool because it didn't do anything before. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I always want I always want this thing to be clickable. So inside the menu icon, what's the CSS for making something clickable? I don't know CSS very well. Make it, yeah, make a div clickable. Um, cursor pointer, that's what it is. I forgot. Okay, cool. All right, cursor pointer. Yeah, I want, um, yeah, we need our selector. I need cursor pointer, and then, yeah, menu icon. There we go. So I want the menu icon class always clickable. That's why I'm not putting this inside of a media query because it should always be clickable. All right. Uh, nope. I need this right here. Okay. So we have that that way. Still. Okay. So that lets me know the little highlight there lets me know that it is clickable. But I still need whenever we click on it for it to actually do something. We need to toggle something to show up, um, to, to, to show the links that we already hid. So how are we going to handle this? Let's see, coming back down here inside of our layout, when we click on the menu icon, we want to toggle that these are shown. Let's see, hmm. Crap. I think we're gonna need to introduce some state to this. Yeah, it's been a while since I've worked with React <laughs> and CSS. Maybe this wasn't the best thing to start with, but anyway, it's all good. It's because we'll get through it. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. This might not be the best solution. We wanna show these links inside of the menu icon. So inside of here, when we click on it. So what that means is that we really need an unordered list. Whoops. We need something inside of here when the menu is clicked, when it's open. Um, and we know that we need state. We need some sort of handling state to know when the menu is clicked or when it's open versus when it's not clicked or when it's closed. Um, I think we can handle the state inside the menu icon component. We know that for the layout, when the layout is to a certain screen size, we want to completely hide these anyway. Um, the the layout module. We know that we want to completely. We want to. We know that we want to completely hide our normal navbar links when the screen is too small, which we've already accomplished that. Now what I haven't, uh, what I'm still kind of working on is making sure that when the menu, when the screen is big and our navbar links are not hidden, that we also have the menu icon hidden. Um, don't have that quite worked out just yet, but we'll get to that. So this might not be the best way, but I think it can work, is that if we take these links and we make them, or we put them over here, inside of this unordered list. Um, I don't like this because we're again kind of duplicating code, but um, whoops, there we go. Yeah, we're again duplicating code, but 
Um, I want to get functionality first, and then we can optimize for the, for kind of niceness later on. All right, so we have uh, we have our links here, but now what we need to do is toggle. We want to have a conditional statement to test whether or not we should show things, show these things. So if toggle is true, we want to show them, and if it's false, we don't want to show anything. So toggle uh, question mark. Um, this isn't gonna make a whole lot of sense. Okay, so if it's true, show, and if it's not, um, not show. <laughs> um, okay. All right, so we can do that. And then down here in the not show, you know what, while we're still developing this, I want to, I want to have something that we can like visually see. Um, I want to say closed. This is just, that's not going to stay there in the final version. I just want to be able to test with that. Um, then we can move all this down and let's see, do, 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 do. do that about like that. Pull this down here. I always like keeping the spacing correct or, you know, keeping it consistent, but sometimes it kind of, especially with this, like it, this just, eh, no. <laughs> but anyway, it'll work for now. Um, okay, now since we're basing this off of toggle, now now the next thing that we need to do, and I'm kind of getting this idea from this little blog post right here, how to implement hamburger menu in React. Yes, sometimes you have to look up seemingly simplistic things like this. So we're gonna pull in the use state hook and we're going to actually use state. So from here, to say import new state from I think it's from react is that correct yeah from react okay and then I'm gonna say const um, you know what toggle open I like calling it toggle open and then set toggle open equals use state don't think we need an empty array in there. Um, I did change the name of this though. So we're going to call it toggle open and set toggle open. All right, so from here, all right, so from here, now we need a click handler. So on click equals handle toggle. Um, handle toggle is the name of the function that we are going to create. Just like so. Like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to say set toggle open equal to the opposite of toggle open. I think that will work. Since we're kind of doing this based on um, something else. Oh, that's right. We have to, it's, it, we're not just resetting things. I'm really glad that I checked because I forgot about, I forgot about that. We can't change the state. It's a function, it's not variables. It's a function, it's a function with variables. Anyway, so we're doing that. Um, hmm, I wonder if that will work. Invalid hook call. Hooks can only be called inside of the body of a function component. This could happen for one of the following reasons. Did I? Oh. Put it outside the component. It's gotta be inside the component. Oops. There we go. Okay, refresh the page. Hey, it's closed. We can see that it's closed. And when it's open, we get an unhandled runtime error, but it did something, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> yes, it's because we're using link, and I forgot to pull in link from, from next. I am a professional. There we go. All right, is there anything else that I'm missing, or that I think I might be missing? We have link, we have link, well, okay, link. Util styles color inherit. Um, I should probably 
pull those in from over here. I'm really glad that I started checking for stuff. Um, yeah, we're at the same level as layout, so the same reference as what happened in layout um, should work over here. Okay. You know what? Let's just go ahead and test it instead of kind of guessing and checking. Hey, it's working. The styling is completely borked, but it's working. Okay, cool. So instead of when it's closed showing this and when it's open doing that, instead we what we want to have happen is, hmm, I'm realizing another potential problem here because I don't want the links to show up inside the header. I kind of want them to show up like underneath the header actually. So instead, because I don't, because I don't want the, I don't want this menu icon to move. Um, well, crap. Also, let's see. Yeah. Also, let's figure these out. And for the UL, I don't want any list styling. And I want to reset the margin to zero and reset the padding to zero. Okay, yeah, that's more in line, no pun intended, with what I want. Okay, so the list style and the margin. All right, before I know exactly, um, this might make some of you cringe. Before I know exactly how I want to use those, I like to kind of use inline styles. I know this is a lot of steps, but I feel like if I can use inline styles, get things where I want them, and then I can move them over to the style sheet. Instead of getting my style sheet kind of all mixed up with everything, um, and then potentially you know, making myself very confused later on. So adding to margin zero, and then I want to do padding. Whoops. Um, there we go. Okay. are and I want that that way let's see I don't need closed down here anymore because I know that the thing works should I just leave an empty span that doesn't seem wise looks like I could just leave an empty string just like that okay now from here Okay, so that's slightly better, but now why is all the list styling still there? I don't understand. Oh, style property values shouldn't contain a semicolon. I didn't think that they should, but I left it in there anyway. Is that a really, really weird bug that was bubbling all the way up and preventing them from getting applied at all? It sure was, at least it looks like it. Okay, so let's refresh the page. Show, not show, show, not show. Yeah, it sure was. And I keep changing the page, which is another reason why I actually want the links to show below the header, not in line with it like that. Okay, cool. So we're almost on to something. All right, so then from here, I wanna see if I can, this might be bad CSS, I want to see if I can force the links um, to show up below the header. I don't know if I can, but we're going to try. Okay, so borrowing more from from this tutorial, specifically the some of the CSS that they're that they're using here, um, some of the styling they're using on their menu nav screen, and I'm going to try to link this below too, um, or I'm definitely going to link this below. Um, so they're for their menu nav screen and the, um, a little bit of what's coming off of their, their hyperlink tag here, or their anchor tag, excuse me. Um, I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna slightly change up the layout um, because what we've landed with is the menu on the left side of the screen, which probably is a bit more standard. Um, and since the hamburger menu right now, the three bars are kind of like all lined up this way because I'm editing inside. I'm editing the HTML inside of the developer menu. But anyway, I'm gonna move it over here to the left of the title. We're gonna hide the links anyway when the screen is this small. Um, 
So when it gets bigger, we'll, we'll just hide the menu icon. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's why we can have, that's gonna keep it so that we can have the menu, the list of, of links over here on the left, coming down from the header up here, then have the menu icon up here. When the screen or the viewport is wider, we'll just hide the menu icon. And when it's smaller like this, we'll hide the links and keep everything here. And that way everything is right on, uh, it's all inside that top up there. On top of that, we've added more styles to the list, which I still don't like. The position fixed has me concerned. Um, I think that's gonna be there. And then the Z index and all that sort of thing. But this is less, with the acceptance, or with the exception of this max width, we're doing less moving things around pixel by pixel. Um, and we're more kind of just resetting where the element is going to sit. And then we're adding a little bit of styling per each one of the list elements. Um, so the first list, since we've, since with the unordered list, we've, with this top left bottom, we've reset basically the list to the top left of the page. Um, we then have to, on the first list, on the first list item, I'm sorry if this is really confusing, we have to do the margin top, we have to give it a really big margin to bring it down below where the, the header is. And then after that, we can keep things, we can just add some padding, add some background color, and be good with it. Um, okay, I think I like where this is, or where this is going, and so I'm going to try to keep going from here. Um, all right, so let's take everything out of the developer tools windows and move it into our code. So for the first part, let's kind of just work backwards. Um, I need these, the, the styles for these lists. Let's see, I need the background and the padding to come out. And I need that to be, yeah, here. So for any list element, we need those. Okay, so that handles that handles this. Um, the first list having a margin of five REM, 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 I never know how that is supposed to be said. Um, we want, let's see, after that, we want LI first child. Is it LI first child or is it UL first child? I don't know. We'll go with that for now. Um, and y'all will just see the chaos if that was wrong. So for the UL, we want, or for the unordered list, we want all of that. Um, our unordered list, let's go ahead and take this off. Since we know that we need, we want a lot more. Let's go ahead and add our unordered list to be all of that. Okay. So now we're back to here. Then back over here in the layout, this is what I mean by moving the menu icon to the left of the, of the site header or of the title. Um, we know that we're going to hide, we know that we're going to hide these nav bar links when the screen gets too small or when the viewport gets too small, excuse me. Um, so these are gonna go away or actually, these are going to go away anyway. And so now we want our menu icon. We're saying that it's going to be over here. Um, all right, so I'm moving that around. I think then, is there any other styling that we needed to pull out from this? Hmm. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen this error before. Selector UL is not pure. Pure selectors must, um, let's see, styles and that. Okay, um, LI is not pure. Pure selectors must contain at least one local class or ID whole thing right here. And I need just this for the style sheet. Yeah, if anybody can, um, if anybody in the comments can explain this a little bit better, yeah, go ahead and, and fire away. Um, you can explain it or open an issue on GitHub. That'd be great too. Um, I would really like to know kind of what the explanation is there. 
I think we can fix it. I just don't understand what on earth is going on. Complete refresh. Yeah, I had no idea what was going on with any of that. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. And then now why are our lines? Yeah, why is this? It's three divs. I wonder why they're all in a horizontal line. Do we need and Bob's your uncle and we're handled? Yeah, we are. Okay, cool. Would you look at that? All right, nice. So now we have a menu icon that toggles whether or not our links are shown. The links do work even though this page isn't responsive very much. We can still navigate between the pages, that's great. Um, and we can also, can we still, yeah, we can still go right back to the main page. So mission mostly accomplished because we're still missing one detail, one final detail. We need to make sure that this icon goes back, goes away again whenever whenever the, the, the viewport is wide. Um, yeah, so we can come back to the layout CSS. We have it working such that um, the navbar links are, are hidden. I think, let's see, we can, can we put, I don't know if we can. I'm gonna see if we can do this. Because it would be a really nice pure CSS solution, even though it's a little bit janky, it would be a really nice pure CSS solution right here that would be able to solve it such that we show the links when it's big and show the menu icon um, when it's small. So I'm gonna say styles, um, I'm gonna call this menu display. Um, okay, we want menu display always none. We want it always hidden, but whenever the links go away, we want it to be shown. Visible, I think. Okay, I got low battery, so I'm gonna, on the camera, so I'm gonna try to fix this really quickly. Okay, so I ran into a bunch of issues, um, but I think I fixed it. I at least fixed it enough for, it's not it's not complete, but I at least fixed it enough for, um, for this change that we're making here. So what the issue was, I should not have gotten that away. What the issue was, was that we wanted to keep this view in the header where we have the site title and we have the links up here, especially since it's only two links. It's not like we have like five or six of them or anything, but we have two links up here um, that we want to show whenever we're on desktop like this. However, whenever it's whenever we need the responsive view on a device, we this is the problem um, is that for something wide enough, we don't want to show both the menu icon and the links because it's kind of redundant. You've got the links here and you have the links here. You don't need that. That's the part that I haven't that I haven't figured uh, I haven't corrected yet. Um, however, if we switch over to a phone like a Pixel 2 XL, just because I don't have other stuff preloaded in here, um, if we switch to something smaller, the links over here go away. We just have the site header so that it's not crowded, and we still have the links that completely work. But whenever, oh yeah, that's all like I'm saying. So we've got that with the responsive view, but then you take the responsive view off, the menu icon goes away, we get our links back. That's as far as I want to get this going. Um, and really what this came down to was realizing that over here inside of menu icon, I was supplying a class name um, kind of like this and that didn't seem to be working. I've never tried this where I'm supplying a class name specifically to a React component because even though this particular component is just going to be a div and we're giving it a class name and then trying to um, trying to operate upon that class name over here in the style sheet for this component and all that sort of thing. It, yeah, it gets crazy. Um, so I didn't expect that to work. I was kind of hoping for it to work, but now that I think about it, yeah, no. What this came down to was saying like, okay, here is the, um, the component for the menu icon and here's the style sheet for it. 
So it came down to adjusting the media queries inside of the menu icon itself, and then also adjusting the media queries inside of the layouts, uh, the layout components style sheet. This really wasn't anything special for the code that we walked through in this video. It was really just all the way down to media queries, which also came down to, um, which also came down to, yes, I have entirely way too many tabs in Windows open. Um, kind of like, like this. Basically, and I know that this isn't an exact uh, example of what I'm doing, but basically just it came down to correct use of the CSS media queries, that sort of thing. Okay, so with all that being said, this is the first video that I'm doing this way. It's kind of a vloggish type thing where we're just walking through, you know, some as I make some changes to the website. I don't know if my site will always be built this way, but for now, um, yeah, we're at least handling that. I don't know if my personal website will always be built this way, but for now, it is what it is, and it's a good learning process.